Thanks for joining us at Right On Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the F-15E Strike Eagle in 148 scale from Academy. It's model kit number 1687, and it's a skill level 3 kit for ages 14 and up. It has 152 parts, including a 4-piece clear canopy set. And it's been previously released in different versions, but it's still available online. This nice reissued kit by Academy of the original 1990 tool has fully engraved panel lines and a nicely detailed interior and exhaust cones and comes with a decent array of weapons underneath. The kit comes with a clear sprue, eight plastic sprues, and two decal sheets. It was released in 2006 in this version and again in 09 as Operation Iraqi Freedom and a few times after that too. The completed dimensions are 15 and 7 8 inches long, 10 and 7 8 inches wide and 4 and a half inches tall. Construction starts in the cockpit area so grab these parts for the two ejection seats and assemble them and note that the, the sides of the seats go on the back edge uh, which is not clearly shown in the instructions. Put those together at this time. Now gather the tub and uh, the related parts here for the rest of the cockpit and note that you get a choice of uh, instrument panels so you get to choose uh, for whichever version you want and I use the two that are circled in red here and then you can assemble them and I would spray the whole thing with a primer to give it a good uh, bite for fi final paint. Now it's time to detail the cockpit and this is typical but you can find some references on the internet um, I painted the uh, panels flat black before installing the seats, etc. Uh, but these um, appointments are easily done with a fine brush. Um, the instrument, uh, some of the instrument items were painted with a, a green and then uh, given a coat or a drop of clear paint in order to uh, give them a sheen uh, and a focal point for the inside. Now pull these parts out for assembly, the front fuselage halves and the landing gear up front. Through test fitting we see that the um, there's a large gap on the top uh, here and a smaller gap uh, on the lower side of the front fuselage so we'll have to address those after assembly. Now we'll paint the landing gear uh, struts and the bottom of the wheel bay white, uh, a flat white and the anti-glare screen in the uh, cockpit area is painted flat black. And then we'll, um, we'll use the cockpit and the landing gear portions to assemble the section. Just to be on the safe side, add some putty or some nose weights in the front just to ensure you don't get a tail dragger. The sides of the cockpit uh, platform slide into the nose along the groove at the bottom and it should fit tightly in place. And once there, um, assemble the two halves and paint the rear anti-glare panel black uh, as well and make sure that the cockpit is flush with the back of the nose. The bottom of the subassembly where the wheel well is fits pretty nicely. There's very minimal gap there. Gather up the parts uh, for the inner jet intakes and there's four pieces total for the subassembly. Now glue these pieces together and note that there are some seams here, especially the ones on the inside that you may want to address at this time. Now you can uh, install the lower air intakes uh, to the main fuselage. Now mate the two halves of the body together with the intake inside and this is going to be a little tricky but uh, make sure that all the pieces are in position and once they're there uh, use some clamps or some rubber bands to make it uh, stay together until the glue sets. And here's how the bottom and the side should look. Um, there's only slight seams there, so it actually fits together pretty well. Now pull out the parts for the main wings, and we'll be gluing those together. Um, you know, use some glue sparingly along the edges to make sure that everything holds together. So we'll uh, assemble the um, main wings along with the rear elevators and the tail fins at this time. Glue the wings, uh, elevators, and tail fins into place and keep them in alignment um, as they set. Uh, make sure that they are in the proper position. And note that there's a um, smaller seam on the top side and uh, a pretty good size seam in the lower wing roots. So at this point, the basic airframe is constructed. Just make sure everything stays straight. 
once the joints are dry it's time to fill those seams and there's a lot of products available but I use a, um, a water soluble uh, filler and then I just wipe off the excess as you can see this uh, dry dex compound is a, a nice filler and once you get it into place you can just wipe off the excess for a nice clean fill Here's a look at the top seam, uh, which looks pretty good after it's dried and ready for paint. The main wing root seam on the bottom is much larger, but it just means more filler. However, you should do this in coats uh, so that it doesn't shrink or crack away from the uh, one side or the other. Now I'll gather these parts to assemble the rear engine exhaust uh, using the exhaust nozzles and nacelles for the rear of the plane. The fit is uh, pretty well in this area and uh, there doesn't seem to be much gap around the nozzles. Now get these parts out to uh, assemble the front jet intake parts uh, and the intake boxes on the right here. Uh, on, and notice that um, the instructions have you adding the uh, tubes uh, at the top of the uh, tail fins at this point. They're in the red circle there but uh, it's easier to handle the model without those uh, in place, so I would uh, wait till later to put those on. Next, gather the parts for the underwing stores and uh, the landing gear struts and doors, etc. And we'll be putting the landing gear together. Paint the gear doors and struts white uh, as well as the inner uh, wheel wells in the fuselage where the landing gear are located and the insides of the uh, flaps and then as assemble all the pieces together for the landing gear. Now spray paint the all the body parts uh, with a uh, gray primer and then follow that up with your color coat uh, base uh, of a light gray. I use the Tamaya uh, XF25 paint for that coat. So grab these parts for assembly soon and then add the front gear to the nose section. Now we can uh, glue those probe uh, tips onto the tops of the tail fins. If you held off earlier, um, it's time to paint those anti-glare screens in the cockpit at this time. And we're going to assemble this piece to the main fuselage. Now this is optional, but there's really no uh, guide pins to help you align the nose to the body. So I added a couple of small pieces of sprue cut from the sprue tree to the front of the nose. Uh, so that it can be uh, fixed into place and this provides some gluing points and adds stability for the nose joint. So I glued the uh, two pieces into the, of sprue into the inner fuselage to act as guide pins to hold the nose on there properly. So with the assistance of those guide pins go ahead and glue the nose to the fuselage and try and make sure there's as little a seam as possible and you can see it works out pretty well. With the nose in place, uh, it's time to add some subtle camo shading. Uh, I use the Tamiya uh, XF24 uh, uh, shading here to the main bodies, so to make sure that it was not too noticeable, but this also helps hide the wing root uh, joints. Now it's time to um, fill the uh, wheel wells with some tissue or tape them off so that you don't get them covered, but to apply a gloss coat uh, to prevent silvering of the decals. Um, you can use just any clear spray here or uh, some future uh, floor polish. Now note that we painted the floor polish on the body before we go to the exhaust nozzles to preserve the patina of those paints. And uh, that's the next step. So we'll paint that uh, section uh, to my Chrome uh, Silver X11 and I only painted these areas on the top and the underside. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see, they're very colorful and the registry is good. I strongly recommend using some decal setting solution to make it fit those contours. But as always, use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products mentioned here in the review for your own protection. For most of the construction, I use Model Master liquid cement and sometimes a slow setting tube glue, but other adhesives are used too for strength like super glue and white glue for clear parts. Mostly the paints are Tamiya acrylic bottle paints that are shot through an airbrush or rattle can paints that can be used for things like primers. To keep track of things I start from the front and work to the rear one side at a time. 
and then uh, you flip it over to finish the decals on the other side. So here are the upper side decal placements. Some of the um, decal placements are not easily seen in the instructions. So here are the, the rear and the wing decal placements for closer examination. Now note that, uh, that you should decal the fuselage sides before assembling the underwing stores. Um, use some decal setting solutions to help them conform to the features on the model. And then once the decals are dry, set that aside uh, overnight to, to let them dry thoroughly. And you, you'll finally, you'll finish this up with a coat of clear flat spray. Now assemble the um, parts to uh, make the wing mounts for the underwing stores. You can use some online references to finish the, um, the weaponry, but um, this is how I did mine with black tips and uh, white bodies. Now collect all the gears, the weapon stores, and the mounts for assembly. The red arrows here uh, indicate the mounting holes for the uh, pods. Now they may have closed or gotten plugged with a little bit of flash or paint so use a drill or a hobby knife to kind of clean those up uh, and also provide a clean gluing surface. Mount the launch rails and the rockets into position like this and the same on the other wing. Now install the uh, pods and the middle rack to the fuselage. Now I mounted the launch rail for this part um, but uh, there were pieces missing from my missile. Uh, I didn't have the fins for um, the missile parts F-18 uh, and 19, so I, I didn't place that into position, but you, they could be made from scrap plastic if you find that's the case in your kit. Add the landing gear to each of the wheel bays and make sure that each piece is mounted you know, symmetrically and aligned properly. So use a slower setting glue in this, in this case. It's about here that I noticed uh, one of the instructions uh, for decal placement was incorrect and that uh, decal should actually go to the inside of this wheel well. If you haven't done so already, install the front landing gear into the nose uh, wheel bay. So here's some detailed photos of the underwing stores, uh, landing gear, etc. And as you can see, your model is really starting to take shape at this point. Now get these parts out um, and we'll be installing the glass next and note that it's a good idea to dip your uh, parts, uh, your clear parts into some uh, future floor polish and then let it wick off and dry thoroughly to give it a clear crisp look. Now we'll add the pilot's sight. Those are the small two clear pieces and note that the, um, the smaller piece goes uh, up front and the longer piece uh, goes on the bottom of that sight glass. Now use some good tape, uh, some fine line tape to mask the frame off and paint the canopy frame a dark gray. Uh, and note that the um, instructions have you painting it wood. These pieces are not wood colored, um, they're a metal frame so make sure you use a, a darker gray, slightly darker than the body uh, to paint the frame in. Then these pieces uh, can be glued into place with some e either some white glue or some textures clear part cement. Uh, and they fit together perfectly, so uh, that is a nice touch. Now use some various shades of black washes, uh, which means more paint or less paint uh, to your thinners, and then uh, make the exhaust look more like a burnt metal, and that's done with those uh, washes to just add a little dab uh, of red paint also to the port navigator light on the left wing and uh, green on the right side uh, for a final touch. Well there you have it. Most everything fit very well on this kit and as you can see it turns out to be a real great looking display. Um, the lack of uh, guide pins or some brackets for the nose cone was one issue that can easily be remedied um, and the uh, the decal placement's not exactly correct, uh, so you have to watch some of those, especially that uh, lower uh, front flap decal. Um, I had a few missing pieces, but they could have gotten lost in handling. Watch for those and make them from styrene uh, sheet if you need to, or even just some scrap plastic. Uh, but otherwise, the entire kit is just gorgeous. The canopy was very clear and fit together perfectly. 
the underwing stores are very faithfully reproduced. Uh, so overall, this is a great looking kit. Uh, remember to add a little nose weight in there and take your time with assembly. The, uh, the wing roots uh, on the main wings were a little large on the underside, so they will require a little extra filler. And as always, you'll need to inspect the entire kit for flash uh, and ejector pins. But overall, it was very, uh, they were very light. So this is a great kit. I think you're going to have uh, a nice uh, model when you're finished. Just take your time and, and be patient. And uh, uh, this is something that everybody can use on their shelf. We hope you like this premium quality step-by-step -step review, and so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, which you can find us on Facebook, and also at our website, www.writeonreplicas.com. Thanks!